Literally in the sky, Dr. Daniel Kunama is an outreach astronomer and a postdoctoral research fellow at the National Research Foundation of the South African Astronomical Observatory. He joins us now via Skype. A very good evening to you, uh, Dr. Daniel. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, now, uh, give us an idiot's guide to what is exactly happening and what's the meaning of it all. Okay. Well, um, I hope you can hear me over the excitement. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a lot of excitement down here in Cape Town. Um, with thousands of people here at the, at the waterfront who come out to see it. Uh, basically what has happened now is the, the moon has passed into the Earth's shadow. Uh, it's, uh, it passed completely into the Earth's shadow about uh, half an hour ago at 9.30 um, to rapturous applause uh, here in, in Cape Town. Um, and then it will stay completely in the, the shadow until just after 11, so just before 11.15. Uh, and then it'll, it'll slowly move out again, uh, ending the eclipse will end just after just after midnight tonight. Now I would like to believe that uh, countries, uh, particularly in the southern hemisphere, are at a prime advantage to have a look at this lunar eclipse. Why is this so? Yeah, so uh, these eclipses are, are not always visible all over the world. Lunar eclipses are very widespread uh, compared to solar eclipses. Uh, this this lunar eclipse is visible, as you said, across the southern hemisphere and all of Africa, as well as parts of Europe and Asia. Uh, North America is, is basically the only continent who's missing out uh, on this lunar eclipse this time around. You know, this lunar eclipse means different things to different people, and uh, some people have even, uh, I mean, it has actually triggered career choices for some people. Uh, and how come this is the longest lunar eclipse in this century? And, uh, you know, what can you as an astronomer learn uh, from this particular eclipse? Yeah, so um, your, I mean, your previous guest said uh, we, we can predict very accurately when these eclipses come around. Uh, the next such eclipse visible in South Africa, total lunar eclipse, will be in 2025, um, but it won't be as long as this. So this is a particularly long one. The, the moon is moving directly through the center of the Earth's shadow, um, and therefore it, it spends a lot of time in the dark. Um, from an astronomical point of view, we uh, we understand exactly what's going on here. Uh, we can predict these things centuries in advance, um, and it's basically the, the laws of gravity which allow us to do that. There is still some science uh, that we can do uh, by observing the surface of the moon like this on a night like tonight. We can we can learn something about what the moon is made of um, by looking at how rapidly it cools and where it cools. Um, by looking at his infrared cameras. So these are the sorts of things we can still do. We, um, there's still always things to learn. And as scientists, we're, we, we're always endeavoring to, to try and find something new to learn. And uh, luckily, this can be viewed with the naked eye. Do we know why it's safe to do so? Yeah, so uh, a lunar eclipse is, is really nice from that point of view. Um, it's, it's basically the, the same as a full moon. Um, it's reflecting sunlight. Uh, and in, in this case, it's reflecting even less sunlight than a normal full moon. Uh, so there really is very little light reaching, reaching your eyes. Uh, so per perfectly safe. Um, a solar eclipse, uh, as you intimated, is, is very dangerous to look at because you are looking directly at the sun, which is, is never safe. So you, you, you have to have eye protection for a solar eclipse. But for a lunar eclipse such as this, it's, it's perfectly accessible. Anyone can walk outside and just go take a look. Um, and, uh, and enjoy a, quite an amazing spectacle. Now, Daniel, I may not be uh, where you are right now. Uh, well, I'll be indoors throughout, in, I mean, in the duration of this lunar eclipse. But then just looking at the screen right now, uh, the rising full moon changed from shining silver to deep blood red during this eclipse. Why is this so? Yeah, so uh, basically what, what has happened is um, as the moon has moved into the Earth's shadow, uh, it, it, has, it has it stopped getting direct sunlight, um, which would cause it to glow silver as we normally see. And what it's getting now is only the scattered light through the Earth's atmosphere. So essentially what it's seeing is um, a sunset, a circular sunset around the whole Earth. Um, that's that's what you would be seeing if you were if you were on the moon right now. Um, so the only light it's getting is the scattered light through through our atmosphere, which when it passes through the atmosphere at that angle, um, scatters red.
These lunar eclipses have fascinated cultures across the globe from time immemorial. Some have even triggered superstitious thoughts. I mean, your view on some of the blood moon myths? Um, I'm a scientist, so uh, from, from my point of view, it's a, it's a, an amazing and uh, uh, incredible, like stunning uh, astronomical spectacle. The fact that we can predict these sorts of things down to the minute, um, years and years in advance, which means that uh, we can arrange events like the uh, Regarding the, the the myths and, and superstitions surrounding it, um, I, I suppose those those come down to personal preference and, and um, how people see these things affecting their daily lives. Dr. Kunama, thank you so much for joining us and uh, for your insights. That is uh, Dr. Daniel Kunama. He's an outreach astronomer and a postdoctoral research fellow at the National Research Foundation of the South African Astronomical Observatory. He joined us uh, live via.